answering subscribers' questions, identifying problems, and providing solutions. Today we have another comment we're going to go through, and I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to only read what is pertinent and relevant to this video because it kind of went two different directions. We're going to deal with the first part as we look at the comment and identify what the problem is and some possible solutions we're going to have. And this question is a response to one of our videos about the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi X570. And this comment is from Strato Arquicticus. Hope I said that right. All right. Kind regards. Thank you for your content. It is really one of the best and clearest. I have this question. I have built a new PC for an intermediate workstation with a Ryzen 9550 on a motherboard ASUS ProArt X750 Wi-Fi. We have already used the first PCI Express slot for an RTX 3800 Ti. I was wondering if I should put an M.20 expansion with two units in the third PCI Express slot. It would solve something. My first comment, welcome, appreciate your comments. Been working on the next video as we are with this one now. Let me take a look at your motherboard resources. This too might be better explained in a video and such it is. I want to interject at this point. Sometimes I can uh, answer a comment with a comment, but sometimes when I get involved like this, there's a lot there. Instead of going through, well, as I said, pictures worth a thousand words, it's just easier to answer it with a video so we can itemize and look at what's got to be what's what. So we can figure out the solution. And my question back, by the way, ASUS ProArt X750 Wi-Fi, you mean the ProArt X570 Creator Wi-Fi. And then his follow-up to that. Thank you very much for answering, Gil. I will wait for your advice to follow the right path. Currently, we have placed two M.20 first and second slots. Okay. I have another question. I won't get into that because that's about a Threadripper Pro. Okay. We have a good idea of what we're working with. We're going to look at the motherboard. We're going to take a look at the CPU. We've got to figure out how our lanes are allocated for what we've got. And this motherboard has an, kind of an interesting twist on it, but always... You know, you change one thing, change everything. we got to look and see if we have enough resources to do what he wants or if he's gone as far as he can go. Now, there are always options. The question is, how far do we want to go and what's it going to cost? Uh, because it's always about motherboard is the foundation of a computer, but the chipset is the foundation of the motherboard. Chipsets rule. So let's uh, walk through the specs, take a look at this motherboard. And this will give us the title of our video, the ASUS ProArt X570 Creator Wi-Fi. So we are going to go to support... We need to download a couple of manuals over to manuals. We don't need the uh, insert page for the motherboard. We need the user's manual and we don't need the quick start guide. The BIOS manual would help, but there happens not to be anything in that that we can use for what we've got to look at. Because remember, we're identifying PCI Express resources. Then we want to see if those resources can be fully bifurcated for a slot. So we've got to see how that stuff's allocated. Because whenever we're looking at adding storage, remember he's already got two M.2 drives on the motherboard. He wants to add another card. And my perception of the question, he wants to put two drives on that third slot. Okay, two drives on that third slot, that would ideally be the uh, Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter. Now, typically when we're putting in one of these cards that we're going to bifurcate that we're going to split lanes remember each m.2 nvme drive requires four lanes it can be four lanes to the cpu or it can be four lanes to the chipset or through the chipset however when we start doing bifurcation typically i don't want to say always but typically that's always to the cpu motherboard manual first thing we'll do is search for specification that should take us to page three for the contents and the first thing i like to look for here it's a diagram. We don't have a diagram, which is kind of a bummer because it tells us who's on first, how everything is laid out, how everything is plumbed. So we'll go to specification summary from the top down. We've also got the uh, connectors with shared bandwidth. That may stop us there, but we've got to go a step further because we're looking at options. Okay, from the top down, we're looking at the CPU 5000 series. Let's go back and take a look at something right quick. What he means is he has a Ryzen 9 5950. So while we're here, we'll take a look at that right quick. Specifications. And that gets us to 16 cores, 32 threads, PCI Express 4.0. The other thing we don't have on there that I like is to uh, identify how many PCI Express lanes we have to the CPU. There should be uh, 20 PCI Express lanes, which is typically a 16 lane slot and four lanes for an M.2 drive. So keep that in mind, 20 lanes. It helps when you guys can be specific on the specs. Makes it easier for me to, you know, change one thing changes everything. Back to the motherboard. And then the chipset, four DIMMs, so we're looking at uh, dual channel. 
a maximum of 128 gigs because of the way the memory controller is configured, I would take that to 64 gigs. And another aspect of how that plays out of balancing CPU core count with RAM and all that, I'll, I'll get to that and address that in just a minute. Uh, but I want to I go through this and itemize. Scrolling on down, expansion slots it will address, and then number two will be storage. Okay, under expansion slots, we have two PCI Express 4.0 by 16. One by 16, electrically and mechanically, or if both are used simultaneously, that says dual by eight. And we have a double asterisk and a single asterisk, which we need to address because this gets kind of funky. On the chipset, we're going to have one PCI Express 4.0 by 16 slot mechanically. Electrically, that's a by four slot. And the first star supports PCI Express bandwidth bifurcation. Remember, number one, this is an ASUS motherboard. So because it's ASUS, number two, ASUS has done more than any other vendor to enable the capability of bifurcation on more motherboards, their motherboards only. And because this mentions the word bifurcation, not hyper and not the 4x4x4x4 we'll get to, uh, that part I wanted to point out because we don't always get this clarity, although there are some other things in the manual that are missing, and I wanted to point that out. And then for the two stars, PCI Express with 16 underscore 2 slot shares bandwidth with, get this, the M.2 underscore 2 slot, which runs PCI Express 4.0 by 8 by default. Huh. When M.2 underscore 2 is enabled, PCI Express by 16 underscore 2 will run at by 4 mode. 4 lanes versus 8 lanes. Wow. Uh, we're going to have to dig some more into this. Let's go on down now to expansion slots for storage. We're looking at three M.2 slots and six SATA ports. Those six SATA ports are going to be one PCI Express lane per port. So six SATA ports, that's six PCI Express lanes. M.2 underscore 1, M.2 underscore 2, those are both to the CPU. And M.2 underscore 2 has an asterisk we're going to need to take a look at. Scrolling on down on storage for the chipset, we'll have M.2 underscore 3. And this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Okay, M.2 underscore 3 shares bandwidth with SATA 5 and 6. Fascinating. So, for us to be able to have four PCI Express lanes, you're going to lose two SATA ports. You understand how that works. It is what it is. And it talks about adjusting in the BIOS settings. Now, I've looked in the BIOS manual, and the BIOS manual, which is a separate file, is a little bit frustrating because these details we don't have. There's also a third document that we need to look at, and that's the ASUS bifurcation chart. I don't see this motherboard on that chart. And I have had some others make comments about that chart has either been updated. Uh, how do I say this? It's changed. What, what matters is what you see on the manual, not what we see with the documentation. Because we're finding some of this documentation is doing this. So whatever you see in the manual, some of the stuff will tell you what you're looking for, but you're going to have to find it. And the best information we have is in this motherboard manual with the specifics. Now one other item we need to point out here over the Ethernet. This has the Marvel 10 gigabit Ethernet. Why does that matter? Okay, good question. How many PCI Express lanes does it take to have 10 gigabit Ethernet? Four. So if those four lanes are allocated to a device that's hardwired on the motherboard and cannot be reallocated, then that's four lanes that you lose. Those four lanes are chipset lanes, the way that is set up. And uh, that matters. Because remember, we've got 20 PCI Express lanes that we're going to have to figure out how we're going to bifurcate if we're going to uh, show one of the options on how this can be set up. There's always options. The question is, is it worth it? Just because it's doable, that doesn't make it practical. But we're all about options. Okay, the next thing I'll do is I'll go back to the index, and we'll go straight to page three, which is the contents. And now that we've looked at specifications, let's look at the connectors with shared bandwidth. And that is on page 12. And this is kind of an eye-opener. Let's start with the slots. Okay, PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, 2, and 3. To reiterate, underscore 1 and underscore 2 are to the CPU, and underscore 3 is through the chipset. If underscore one is used by itself, it's a 16 lane slot. However, when underscore one and underscore two are used simultaneously, each of these are by eight. And then underscore three is supposed to be, even though it's a uh, 16 lane slot mechanically, it's a four lane slot electrically, and that's through the chipset. And we have also M.2 underscore one and M.2 underscore two and M.2 underscore three. Now, M.2 underscore one, that's part of the 20 lanes we talked about, so that's dedicated. And then in about 2 underscore 2, some shared bandwidth, some stuff you uh, have to think about. 
and N.2 underscore 3, which is through the uh, chipset. Now, the way he's got this motherboard laid out, he's got a GPU in PCI Express for 16 underscore 1. He has two M.2 drives on the motherboard, M.2 underscore 1, M.2 underscore 2. And in slot number 3, which is a four-lane slot, he wants to put two drives, but there's only four lanes, and he needs eight lanes. So we're going to have to, uh, let's go a step further and see how those uh, resources are allocated because it gets kind of weird once we start looking at the details, how things change. And to reiterate, change one thing changes everything. Okay, PCI Express with 16 underscore 1 and underscore 2. By 16, dual by 8, or get this, check this out. When we plug in that M.2 underscore 2, even though he's not using PCI Express with 16 underscore 2, because he's using M.2 underscore 2, PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, where his GPU is at, is now in an 8-lane slot. And his M.2 underscore 2, which gets full bandwidth, is in a 4-lane slot. That puts PCI Express with 16 underscore 2 at 4 lanes. And M.2 underscore 3 down here, which is, uh, to reiterate, through the chipset, you lose say to 5 and 6 to get the 4 lanes you need for M.2 underscore 3. So what are our options? Based on this information, you can put one M.2 on one, on one card in the PCI Express with 16 underscore 2 slot because there are four lanes default allocated if you're using all three of those resources. Wow. You could put a self-bifurcated card in that third slot so that you take those four lanes and bifurcate them. So you have two drives on a self-bifurcated card. Now, when you do that, you're looking at something like Ampletech, who makes the Ampletech Squid that does six drives on a card that works in an eight-lane slot or a 16-lane slot. And since we're looking at a four-lane slot, you want to take two drives, four lanes and four lanes, and you want to uh, bifurcate that. They have a card for that. However, it's PCI Express 3. There's another chart in the manual that we need to take a look at that talks about bifurcation because uh, there's another option. And we will do a search for the word bifurcation, which is not normally something that we can do in an ASUS manual, but it works in this one. PCI Express bifurcation, which is on page 23, and M.2 settings and PCI Express with 16 slots with a Ryzen 5000 series CPU. And to reiterate, a 5950, which is 16 cores, 32 threads. And uh, the Adobe After Effects multi-frame rendering CPU optimization formula, I'm going to come back to that because it's relevant to how we build a balanced, purpose-built machine. Because this is kind of an interim workstation. It's not a workstation, but being used as an interim workstation until he can build his Threadripper Pro that he's looking at. So bifurcation, here we go. Number one, PCI Express by 16 underscore one. Situation one, full bifurcation by four by four by four by four. Then you would have PCI Express uh, by 16 underscore two not being used. PCI Express by 16 underscore three is PCI Express. And this is interesting. I didn't realize or I didn't, I didn't make note of this, but PCI Express by 16 underscore three is PCI Express 3.0. So that's a big, uh, that's a big difference in uh, bandwidth and you get that one four-lane slot. It's a full four lanes, but it's only PCI Express 3. Does that matter? Well, PCI Express 4, third generation to reiterate, around 7,000 megabytes. And to reiterate, PCI Express 3.0, you're looking at around maybe uh, 3,000 to 3,500 megabytes. So yeah, double the speed, uh, more heat, yes. But you know, it's again about options. If you do this, you gotta do that. If you do this, you gotta do that. And situation number two. It's always in the details. All right. PCI Express with 16 underscore 1, situation 2. If you do bifurcation for two drives, then you can put two drives in there. Or you can bifurcate the uh, second slot by 16 underscore 2. And again, to reiterate, two drives. So you're kind of in a conundrum because you've got an RTX 3080 Ti. It's not so much about lanes as it is about uh, the VRAM, but you're shy on VRAM based on the CPU. Because the issue of the formula is CPU cores times 4 equals uh, RAM. So if you're looking at 16 cores, 64 gigs of RAM, nice balance. And then your CPU cores equals video RAM. So if you've got 16 cores, you want to have a 16 gig video RAM on that GPU, which you don't have. But for a balanced, purpose-built machine to do rendering. Because remember, the GPU can do like 80% of the rendering. And it's all about CUDA cores if your rendering requires that. So... Uh, We've talked about your first option. Your second option, it gets, I think, a little bit more complicated 
because you, you need the processing power of that GPU. But if you go down this path, you have to decide which way you want to go. And I don't know if that is a practical solution. Now, the nice advantage is, is this is the way this works with a Ryzen 5000 series processor. If you're using a, uh, a Ryzen 5000G series, which I wouldn't, then you would have the ability to have three drives on that board, but you don't get full bifurcation. You get by eight, by four, plus by four. So that's three drives, which would be uh, one, three, and four. But it's PCI Express 3. And if we're going to keep PCI Express 4, the only way you get full bifurcation would be in that first slot. But if uh, that's the way it goes, then you can't use the second slot because those resources are shared. You got 20 lanes to work with. Four are allocated to M.2 underscore one. So you set that aside. That leaves 16. So how do you split 16 lanes between two slots? Eight and eight. And you can bifurcate either one of those slots. But if you do, the GPU suffers. It's only going to use eight lanes. Now, I don't think you'll see an issue with bandwidth because, again, to reiterate, it's about video RAM. But I wouldn't take the GPU down to four lanes. So if the GPU is going to operate with eight lanes, that leaves you eight lanes, two drives, you could put in a Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter, either slot, which would be uh, situation number two. Let's see what else the manual can tell us. I was in hopes we'd see something in the manual about bifurcation in the BIOS, but we are not. And to reiterate, the separate manual about the BIOS has nothing about this information in it. So I'll do a search by four, by four, plus by four. Let's see what that gets. Okay, now doing a search on by four plus by four does not yield us any more information than what we have right here. So we can tell you what your options are to reiterate. You could put a Super Micro Dual M.2 NVMe adapter in there, inexpensive to add two drives, but you cannot put that in the third slot. That third slot only has four lanes. So to reiterate, if you want that third slot to have two drives, that's got to be a self-bifurcated card, and that would be something like Ampletech. Now, the price of that Ampletech card, because I have the other part of the equation that you talked about, which is a Threadripper Pro, whether you build a machine now because you've got an RTX 3080, I think you're going to want to go up with a GPU. But as far as a Threadripper Pro with a 3000 series processor, which is what we can get right now, yes, it'll work with a 5000 series processor. We're going to have to have a BIOS update. So you can build it. And I would put the money instead of in one of these I.O. cards like an Ampletech that does self-bifurcation, put that in the motherboard for the Threadripper Pro. I think it's a better investment, especially if you need a machine for rendering for long term. This is a short term fix. There are options, but I don't like any of the options laid out to us. Full bifurcation of the first slot. I just uh, I think you'd be better off putting that other money in that other motherboard. So I hope this helps. I want to thank you guys for watching. My name is Gil Boyd. This is Builder Buy. We we'll look forward to seeing you next video. We're out. <laughs>